Now, I'm not sure if you actually realize this, but momentum and impulse are actually based on Newton's second law and Newton's third law. So I decided to have a look and just to revise some of our forces from grade 11 today. So we're going to be looking at a question from the Mpumalanga 2019 prelim paper on forces. It was question two, and I would like to look to this question as it will just help to consolidate forces before we attempt momentum next week. So we will go full on into the momentum next week. So looking at forces. So the question said, a 3 kilogram block is attached to an 8 kilogram block R with a light extensible string that is passing over a frictionless pulley. A force F exerted on a block P at an angle of 30 holds the block at rest on a rough horizontal surface as shown in the diagram. The maximum static frictional force on the block P is 50 newtons to the left. Now when we look at this diagram, because we've got that force acting to the left, immediately we seem to think that the object or the system is moving to the left. But don't be fooled by that. So you need to read the question clearly and understand properly what they are telling you. So let's look at the question again. So when I look at this question, oh sorry I've just gone too far. So when we look at this question again, so here's this force F. Now they're telling us there's a force F being applied at an angle of 30 to the horizontal here. However, the frictional force is 15 newtons to the left. So there's friction between this block P and the surface and it's to the left. So there's friction moving in that way. Now, what do we know about friction? We know that friction acts in the opposite direction to the motion. So which way is our system moving? It's moving to the right. So it's moving towards the hanging object. So that is the direction of motion. So indicate that on your diagram. So we will show the direction of motion is there. Now, there is the situation. Now, when we go to the first question, Sorry, I need to get to the next page. So the question says, state Newton's second law of motion in words. Now, you need to learn all your definitions off by heart. So remember, even though you did this work last year, you still need to know it for this year. So start revising, set up an early revision program, a, rev a revision program for yourself, and start learning those definitions, because those are given, and they are easy marks. All right, so Newton's second law is based on Fnet, equal to ma. So it just says when a net force is applied to an object, the object will move in the direction of this applied force. And this net force is going to, or we're going to find that the acceleration of the object is going to be directly proportional to f net, and the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So really just putting it into perspective, the acceleration is directly proportional to F net and the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Right, looking at the next question, they're wanting us to draw a free body diagram of block P. So block P is resting on the surface, so always draw a free body diagram is a big fat dot. So we need to understand what are all the forces acting on this dot P. Well, obviously the easiest one is always to work with force of gravity. And in which direction does force of gravity act? Force of gravity always acts downwards. All right. So yes, it's always good to have a key as well. So maybe to say Fg equals weight. So don't forget to give a key or a legend to illustrate what your symbols are representing. We also have a normal force. So remember, block P is resting on a surface. So there will always be a normal force between the object and then the and the surface. So the, a normal force will be acting upwards. Right, so now we know the object's moving to the right. Why is the object moving to the right? Well, block P is connected to block R, which is going to, with a piece of string, and we're going to refer to that as tension. So that force in the string is referred to as tension, and that's the tension in the rope to the right where the system is pulling it. What other forces do we have? It's nice and easy, so we know we've got force of friction. And then we have that applied force F. 
Now don't forget to include the angle if you can. So there we have it. So those are the forces acting on object P. So we have force of gravity acting downwards. We have the normal force, that is the surface pushing back up onto block P. We have the system being pulled to the right because of the tension in the rope. Where is friction? acting in the opposite direction and there's also the force applied at an angle of 30 degrees acting to the left. But that object or the system is not moving to the left, it's moving in the direction of the hanging object. So we get caught out sometimes by just looking at the diagram and making an assumption it's going to be moving in the direction of the applied force but it's not. So always be very careful when reading and interpreting your question. Right, so let us go on to the next question. They then asked us to calculate the magnitude of the applied force. Force F is now removed and block P accelerates to the right. And they want us to calculate, well, I think we've missed a question here somehow. Okay. Let me just go back a bit. There we go. Calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of block P. So now what we are going to do, we're going to start off with Newton's second law. So we're going to work out the acceleration. So F net equals MA. Actually, I think I'm on the wrong question yet. Please forgive me. I'm still finding my way around here and I seem to be missing this question. There we go. Um, Calculate the magnitude of the force, but now we've got it. So sorry, I lost my way. Right, so we want to work out now the applied force. So they're telling us now force F is now removed and block P, so block P, accelerates to the right. The coefficient of kinetic friction is that coefficient, all right, is between block P and the horizontal surface is equal to 0,4. Now what we need to remember is that the force of friction is equal to the coefficient multiplied by the normal force. Alright, so now we need to go work out what is the normal force and we know that the force of gravity is equal to mg which is equal to the mass of the object and the mass of the object was um, Sorry, I just want to go back to the original question because we need all that information on the original diagram. So it's backwards and forwards here. And so they told us it's a three kilogram object. All right. So, oh dear. So now we've got to go back down here. Not this one. So sorry, guys. I'm really battling here between the frames. Alright, so here we are. Okay, so it's 3 times um, 9,8. But sorry, that's the hanging object. Guys, please forgive me. Alright, so let me just get the... There we go. It's the hanging object. Alright, so let us just get that one. All right, so Fg equals 8 times 9,8. And so now we use our calculator and we plug in. So it's 8 times 9.8 equals, and we get 78,4 newtons down. So that is the weight of your object. Right, so now looking at F net equal to ma. So originally this whole system was at rest. So because the system was at rest, it means it wasn't accelerating. And so what we're going to find is that the mass times the acceleration is going to be zero. So T is the tension in the rope minus the force of the horizontal component of X minus 15 is equal to zero, which was the force of friction between the object and the surface. So now we're going to go T 
which was 78,4. Sorry, let's just put that in there. Let me just erase that. Oh, not working there. Sorry about that. No, not working today. All right. So let me just get my pen back. So we're going to ignore that. So we can sub in now. The tension is going to equal force times gravity. So 78,4 minus Fx minus 15 is equal to 0. Now we're going to go solve for Fx. So Fx is going to equal 63,4 newtons. All right. So that will be the horizontal component of our force. And so looking at this diagram, so let us have a look. So we've got the force being applied. We've got an angle of 30 degrees. We have just worked out Fx, so it's the horizontal component of that force F1. And there's the other vert the vertical component of F. So we've worked out the horizontal component, and they're wanting us to calculate the force applied, that force F. So now we're going to make use of our Pythagoras. So we know that this is 63,4 newtons. So now we go. When we're looking at this angle, in this triangle, cos 30 degrees, that is the adjacent side, so it's cos of 30. So cos of 30 degrees equals the uh, um, adjacent side over F. So therefore F is going to equal 63,4 divided by the cos of 30 degrees. And we go to our calculator. And we find out that that is going to equal 73,21 newtons. And there we go. So when we are working with forces, we've got to be very careful that we are making sure that the system is moving in the right direction. Once we've identified that, we know that the force of gravity acting down is going to equal the applied force acting up. And remember that it's the tension in the rope is because of the hanging object, the suspended object. So the tension in the rope is going to now equal 78,4. So we've got our applied force and therefore we can now go and use our triangle. We can use Pythagoras to work out the force that was applied.